Hotep. Welcome to Nile Valley Civilization. Today our topic is the Egyptian Temple, Mother of the Church. Our guests, uniquely qualified to speak on architectural and religious themes. He presently works as an architect in the architectural office in Los Angeles which specialized in religious buildings. There he has gained nearly 10 years of professional experience. He holds a BA in Industrial Arts and associate degrees in architectural technology and technical illustrations. Our guest is also a member of Epsilon Pi Ta, the International Society of Industrial Educators. He has traveled extensively, including twice to Egypt with the noted historian and Egyptologist, Dr. Yosef Ben Yukanis. He has also traveled to archaeological sites in Mexico. He is presently a uh, lecturer and, and teacher at the University of uh, California, Irvine, um, under, the, under the tutorial assistance program um, in the historical topic of uh, glory of the black race. And I'd like to welcome my guest, Matthew Ater. Hotel, brother. Hotel, brother. Thank you very much for uh, joining us here today. It's and this is, to be here. It's like it's a very interesting uh, topic we'll be having uh, the Egyptian uh, temple, Mother of the Church. Now, um, with some of the uh, information that I've seen uh, you lecture before at various places, uh, it seemed to be very, uh, very mind-blowing. And I just want you to tell us a little bit about uh, the idea or how you came about looking at the uh, simulation between the, uh, the church and Western society and the uh, Egyptian temples. Well, the nature of my work is um, basically dealing with religious buildings. Um, coming up and working in an office uh, under a black architect in Los Angeles by the name of Lester O'Bankhead. We specialize mainly in religious buildings. And uh, we've been a long time, uh, uh, spent quite a while uh, studying ancient Greek and classical uh, architecture, as they call it, classical architecture, Roman, Greek, Greco-Roman architecture. And most of the accomplishments of architecture in terms of the basilicas and cathedrals, the columns and so forth, have always been attributed to the Greeks. And so uh, once I began to study ancient Kemet, I began to notice that many of the elements that were typically uh, characterized as being Greco-Roman in their origins actually had their origins in ancient Kemet, which we call Egypt today. And I like to make that point because we'll be using those terms interchangeably. Uh, Egypt and Kemet is basically one and the same. Mm -hmm. So it came about primarily uh, as a result of working in architecture, dealing with religious buildings, and noticing how um, <coughs> the ancient Egyptians had, for thousands of years before the Greeks produced their first temple, uh, the various elements that have been attributed to the Greco-Roman world. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I see you have a couple of slides and stuff you're going to show us on this thing here. So let us just go right on and see. Take a look at these slides here. Uh, the first slide is a picture of the Temple of Isis on the island of Philae. And as you had mentioned, the, uh, the, enti the uh, title of this particular program is the Egyptian Temple Mother of the Church. This particular uh, temple is actually the prototype for all the cath cathedrals and basilicas that exist throughout Europe. Um, if you notice the double uh, pylon, uh, which they call the twin towers, typically in a church, is an ancient theme that goes back at least to the 18th dynastic period in ancient Kemet, uh, some thousand years before the Greeks produced their first temples. And off, there's a small colonnade in front of the temple, the twin towers, mm -hmm. and just to the right of the colonnade there's a small temple or chapel dedicated to the first multi-genius in human history, long before Michael uh, Angelo and the rest of the ones that we hear about in the history books. Uh, Imhotep uh, at this particular site here was actually deified and worshipped by the Greeks of the Ptolemies as a god. And here's a close-up uh, of Imhotep on the walls. You see the face has, has been chiseled out, which is typical of the art and icon uh, iconography of ancient Kemet. To deface the African characteristics of the Mimas, then we'll be showing you a few of those examples as we move along here. And so here you can see uh, Imhotep, uh, and you can see clearly the Afrikoid features here. You have the prognathous jaw, the thick lips, and the broad nose here. The first uh, multi-genius in human history designed the first monumental uh, structure known to man. The only one of the seven wonders of the world that we no longer have to wonder about. You can still go to ancient Kemet and see these uh, magnificent uh, monuments, uh, the first of which was designed by this brother, Imhotep, who was also, um, I might note, uh, the Grand Vizier under the pharaoh uh, uh, King Zoser. And as I said, he was so good at medicine that eventually, uh, in later kingdoms, he was actually deified and made a god. Yeah, very impressive piece. And here on the uh, Masonic Temple, it seems as though the only place that we can find the African history is on the temples of other people. 
the Scottish Rite building here in Los Angeles on uh, Wilshire Boulevard, Wilshire and Plymouth, I believe, Street, you see they actually have Imhotep on the wall. And what is interesting is they also have his name, Imhotep, written uh, in his original uh, status because the Greeks uh, call him Asclepius, and there's a scholar by the name of uh, James and Hurry who's written a book on Imhotep. And he states that the, uh, the Greek god Asclepius, which is the god of medicine, is in essence Imhotep. And even today when physicians swear and they become physicians, they swear to Asclepius uh, no other than Imhotep. And here there's, a, there's an architect architectonic theme in this particular building. Because you see first off on the wall on Wilshire Boulevard, you see Imhotep and his pharaoh King Zoser. And next you have the Babylonians and you have the Mesopotamians and you have the Greco Roman world. Going on down to Christopher Wren at the end of the building and on around the building, you have uh, George Washington. And there's a statement here of history saying, saying that ancient Kemet or Egypt was the, were the first great builders, the first great masons, the first great architects. And the legacy of construction and architecture goes all the way back to this African nation, uh, ancient Kemet. Going on, uh, establishing here at, at the city hall, even on the city hall, it was built in the 1920s, right when the uh, Tutmania was out, when they uh, began to excavate the uh, sites uh, of uh, Tutankhamun and ancient Kemet. They put this pyramid on top of city hall as a tribute to the greatness of the ancient Egyptians. And it shows that here how the Greeks and the Romans, as you see the Greco-Roman columns uh, down below there, where they inherited a legacy uh, from ancient Kemet. Again, you see an architectonic theme right there uh, in the structure itself. Uh, moving on, you can see the actual step pyramid that was designed by Imhotep. The again, the first monumental structure known to man. And you can still actually go there and see this particular building. Going back to City Hall to show you that they actually put his temple right on top of City Hall, showing the legacy that they had inherited from ancient Egypt. Time and time again, I'm actually uh, I'm just uh, appalled and amazed. At the same time, when uh, I walked in the USC library, and right over the door you see here, the uh, figure of the uh, ancient Egyptian, of course they've shown him as being white in this particular picture, uh, passing the torch of knowledge onto the greco roman world. You can see in the background there the uh, pyramids and you see, see the skyscrapers showing that the legacy of the skyscrapers and the builders, the masonry of the western world, goes back to the torch of knowledge in which the Greeks receive, you, as you see the, br the brother here, the Egyptian painted as white, passing on the torch of knowledge to the uh, ancient Greeks there. Time and time again, themes. Again in Los Angeles, you see the public library, the main library of Los Angeles, on top of which you see a pyramid with the sun disk in the middle and the torch, again, the same torch that was passed on from the Egyptian to Greek, symbolizing the inheritance of knowledge that they received from ancient Kemet, right on top of the library downtown. Uh, and as we walk in, you can see the basic theme here, the pyramid on top. And just over the door, you can vaguely see two uh, figures here, a Greek and a Roman. You can See, where, where they actually learned their uh, architecture, how to build their columns and so forth from the ancient Egyptians. Here you can see the typical uh, Greco-Roman temple with the uh, Greco-Roman so-called Doric columns with the fluted type of columns. That's the vertical lines going along the columns. Individually uh, cut, bonded, and stacked together, what we call the headers and so forth going across the top to bind the entire temple together. This particular temple, according to Fletcher and many other scholars in court and, and also to George Rawlingson, was actually taken from the concept of the Egyptian Mamisi, a birth house. And this is the temple that they chose to build all their temples off of based on the uh, temple, Mam the uh, Mamisi house, or the birth house of the ancient Egyptians. Here again, you can see a close up of Poseidon's temple of the door, typical door column, which in most uh, uh, art uh, schools and architectural schools they teach is a Greek innovation. We go right to ancient Egypt, and you can see at least 1,500 years this particular colonnade, 1,000 years before uh, the Greeks produced their first temple. And this is the temple of Hatshepsut, a great African woman who ruled all of ancient Kemet. And you can see here the typical fluted column, individually stacked uh, with the uh, header going across the tide again. Again, uh, amazed that the, uh, here you find the Greco-Roman col column in, in Egypt before Greece. 